Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Telescope Man. I don't know if uh, some of my subscribers have ever noticed, uh, <clears throat> usually have the camera positioned, uh, uh, you know, way over on the other side of the desk, uh, kind of pointed across the desk in this direction. I know you can see my uh, handy talkies and the Holocrafter little uh, receiver up here. But many of you may not know that right behind me is uh, what's called a Collins KWM2 uh, radio made in 1963. Still works just fine. Uh, pull it out, turn it on uh, about once or twice a month just to play with it and see how it operates and uh, try to make a contact or two on it. And then I switch back to my flex radio or uh, some of my newer ICOM radios. But this 1962, what's called a winged emblem, it's got a Collins winged little icon emblem on each of the pieces that you can see. Uh, so they call it the, uh, some people call it the winged emblem KWM2, again made in 1963. So I kind of wanted to show this radio to you and kind of explain a little bit about its operation and let you hear it, of course. So I've got it turned on. So let's uh, see if I can find anybody that may be out there talking right now. So what do we have here that we're operating? This is the KWM2 receiver, transceiver. This is the 516 power supply. And this is the 30L1 amplifier. It puts out about 600 watts <clears throat> if I have it turned on and in use. Otherwise, this puts out about 100 watts. I kind of watch it all with an old Heathkit uh, SWR meter and power meter is what I'm using to uh, kind of keep an eye on the radio and see what it's doing. Uh, it's real interesting to operate and again uh, I only use it once or twice a month just to see uh, if I still remember how to use it. Now since I don't operate it a lot you know, I know there's folks out there that have the tune-up procedure memorized, but I, I have never bothered to memorize it. What I did is I just simply printed out uh, the page out of the manual, copied it, and that gives me the tuning procedure uh, for the KWM2. You have to tune this radio for whatever frequency you happen to be operating on. And if you move uh, very far from that frequency, then you're going to have to do another little partial tune-up on it. So uh, it's not like the modern radios where uh, basically they don't require any tuning. Uh, only the antenna needs to be resonant. Or at least showing 50 ohms to the transceiver using a tuner. They don't operate that way. Your antenna's got to be resonant uh, below 2 to 1, according to the manual. And then you have to tune this radio uh, as you move across the band. So a little bit different the way it was done in the 1960s and part of the 1970s. So uh, let me kind of explain some of the dials and what they do, give you a little bit better idea. 
I'm going to turn the radio toward the camera a little bit. So maybe you'll get a little bit better view of it. There you go. And I can probably get the camera just a little bit closer to it. Yeah, there we go. All right, so um, I know uh, if someone is new to ham radio or doesn't know anything about ham radio, they see all these knobs and things and go, what am I supposed to do first? Well, really the first thing you're supposed to do is turn it to the correct portion of the band that you're going to be working on with this knob right here. And uh, then you're going to set the two knobs kind of to the middle of the band. There's little numbers up here. I don't know if you can read them. This one says 14. And this one says 14 right there. And I've got them both set to kind of the middle of the band. That's where you would start your tuning. Uh, and you would manipulate these two and also manipulate a little lever right here, which is uh, loading, called loading, in order to get a particular reading on this meter. And uh, once you go through the tuning procedure, then you can transmit. You can always receive uh, without doing very much except turning the exciter uh, knob, which is this one, to get the loudest signal. That's really all you need to do to receive. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, uh, the two real important knobs are the AF gain and the RF gain. This is the RF gain, the AF gain. And uh, let me kind of show you how they work. Got to get, I want to get the background noise first. So there's the background noise. Let me turn up the RF gain. See how the noise increased when I did that? Let me turn it back down. About right there. Still hear noise, but it's not overwhelming. Now let me find a signal. Kind of weak. See if we can find a stronger one. Yeah. Somebody running CW. This is some DX signal coming in right now. Anyway, uh, you manipulate these two to get the best uh, audio out of it. <clears throat> really no directions on how do you do that. It's strictly done by what you hear by manipulating the RF gain. And uh, by raising or lowering the uh, audio gain. Uh, anyway, it does work in upper side band, lower side band, and CW by turning this knob and these two positions over here. Uh, one is used, uh, they're both used for uh, tuning the radio. Uh, <clears throat> one says tune, the other one says lock. And uh, there's a mic gain right way over here. And during the uh, setup, 
and tuning, you kind of can determine the best uh, mic gain by some readings on the meter that you get while you're tuning. So for my uses, I know that about right there is a really good mic gain for me and for the microphone that I'm using, which is this uh, D104 microphone. Uh, it's the mic attached to this radio. And uh, <clears throat> I know I get some old timers on the radio from time to time and they can tell I'm using a D104 by the sound of my voice over the radio. So uh, these seem to work real well with the older rigs like, like this KWM2 is this D104 uh, microphone, which is what I use with this radio. Uh, kind of an interesting point is this is not a regular RC jack here. It's actually the size that the uh, telephone exchanges used to use on those big panels that you remember seeing that the operator, when you call the operator, they plug you into a panel, you know, in front of them and plug a bunch of plugs. This is the same size as those telephone operators used to use. It is not a standard uh, RC jack like you'd find on a guitar or something. It's actually... It's actually smaller than a regular uh, 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 RC jack. Uh, that like what you'd find on a guitar or something. Not the same size. So you actually have to go find this online and wire it into the cable uh, if you're using one of these uh, special microphones with it. Uh, which this didn't come with the radio. This mic didn't come with the radio. It, it was something I bought later. So let's move this back. I'll kind of go through some of this other equipment for you real quick. And let's make sure you can see it all. Yeah, I'm using a little uh, Heath kit, uh, older Heath kit, SWR power meter connected to this just so I can keep an eye on it and look at it while I'm tuning up the radio kind of uh, goes along with the old 1962 radio. This is the 516 power supply, and it's been totally rebuilt. It's basically solid state now. There are no tubes in here. There's tubes in here, and uh, of course in here, but not in here. This is solid state now, and it has a, mic has a uh, speaker in the front of it. And this, of course, is the 30L1. Now, what do you do to tune this up? Well, after you've got this tuned and your antenna tuned, or if it's not resonant, then you come over here and you manipulate these two knobs in order to get a zero reading on this meter. And there's a particular way you do that. And then at the very end, you try to dip the tuning knob, it's called dipping it, and the meter will slightly move downward. And you'll get to a point where when you try to dip it, it won't dip anymore. It, it will really won't move. And that just means you're tuned up perfectly with uh, the amplifier at that point. So it requires a lot of tuning to actually... Uh, transmit with it, and that's why I use a little checklist uh, as I'm tuning it up if I intend to transmit. Anyway, with that said, I hope you enjoyed this little video. I've never done one on the KWM2 station in the ham shack here. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, you know, they're kind of fun to fool with, uh, and I don't see myself ever actually uh, selling this piece of equipment. I think I'll keep it and let my daughter sell it uh, when I'm a silent key. <laughs> anyway, everybody have a great day. Uh, keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night. Yeah. Clear skies and 73. Everybody be good.